Welcome back to Writing Practices. Today we're going to walk through how to create a rental agreement letter. If you're a landlord or a tenant, this letter is essential for laying out clear terms for renting a property. In this tutorial, I'm going to break down each part of the agreement, step by step, to help you craft a clear and comprehensive letter. So let's dive in. Step 1. Starting with the basics, the header. The very first thing you want to include in your rental agreement is the header, which has the basic details of the agreement. At the top, you'll write the title Rental Agreement, so that it's immediately clear what this document is. Right below that, include the date when the agreement is made. This is super important for legal purposes. It tells both parties exactly when the terms were set. Now you're going to introduce the landlord's information. This should include the landlord's full name, address and phone number. It helps make the agreement official and provides contact information if needed. Next, you'll do the same for the tenant. List the tenant's full name, address and contact details, just like you did for the landlord. This ensures that both parties are clearly identified at the top of the agreement. Step 2. Describing the rental property. Now let's move on to the part where you describe the rental property. Here, you'll add the address of the property being rented. You want to make sure that the property is clearly described so that there's no confusion later on. Make sure you include the city, state and zip code. This part doesn't have to be long, but it needs to be accurate. Step 3. Defining the term of the lease. The next section is all about the term of the lease. Here, you'll specify how long the rental agreement will last. You can mention whether it's a monthly lease, a yearly lease or a fixed period, such as from one specific date to another. It's also a good idea to state how the lease can be renewed, whether it will automatically renew month to month or require a new agreement. Be sure to include the notice period required if either party wants to terminate the lease early. This section helps both the landlord and tenant know what to expect in terms of the length of the rental period. Step 4. Setting the rent. Now let's talk about rent, one of the most important parts of any rental agreement. Here, you'll list the monthly rent amount and the due date, which day of the month the rent needs to be paid. You'll also want to include how the rent should be paid, whether it's by bank transfer, check, or another method. In case of late payments, it's crucial to add a late fee clause. This states how many days after the due date the rent is considered late and how much extra will be charged. This helps ensure that the rent is paid on time. Step 5. Mentioning the security deposit. Next, you'll include a section on the security deposit. A security deposit is the amount of money the tenant gives up front to cover any potential damage to the property. You should clearly state the amount of the deposit and how it will be handled. Mention that the deposit will be returned at the end of the lease if the property is left in good condition, except for normal wear and tear. This gives tenants peace of mind while protecting the landlord's property. Step 6. Clarifying utilities. Another key part of the agreement is the section on utilities. You'll need to specify who is responsible for paying which utilities. For example, will the tenant be responsible for electricity, water, gas or other utilities? You'll also want to mention if there are any utilities that the landlord will cover, such as trash collection or internet. This keeps things clear from the beginning and prevents any confusion over bills later on. Step 7. Addressing maintenance and repairs. Now let's talk about maintenance and repairs. This section outlines who's responsible for keeping the property in good condition. Generally, tenants are responsible for day-to-day -day upkeep, such as cleaning and minor fixes, while the landlord is responsible for major repairs, unless the tenant caused the damage. Here, you can also mention that the tenant should report any necessary repairs to the landlord promptly. This ensures that any issues are dealt with quickly and keeps the property in good shape. Step 8. Explaining termination. The next step is explaining how either party can terminate the agreement. You'll want to mention how much notice either the landlord or tenant needs to give if they wish to end the lease. For example, you might say that 30 days notice is required. Make sure to include the time by which the tenant must vacate the property on the termination date, usually by the end of the day. Step 9. Wrapping it up with signatures. Finally, the last step is getting both parties to sign the agreement. You'll want to include lines for both the landlord's and tenant's signatures and dates next to them. 
The signatures make everything official and legally binding, so don't skip this step. And that's it. You now have a clear and comprehensive rental agreement. Each of these sections plays an important role in setting the terms for both the landlord and tenant. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to check out more tutorials here on writing practices.